a top WWE NXT star requests his release from the company. Also have an update on talent having 90 days to prove themselves before they could be released. We also have news on when WWE is going to pull the trigger on the Roman Reigns-Drew McIntyre match. Plus, we have Finn Balor and AJ Styles teaming up on Monday Night Raw and a stipulation is added to the WrestleMania Backlash match between Edge and AJ Styles. All this and more in today's WWE News. Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of WWE. So let's start off talking about Roderick Strong. Yes, former NXT Cruiserweight Champion, former NXT North American Champion, former NXT Tag Team Champion Roderick Strong has requested his release from the company. Roderick Strong has reportedly requested his WWE NXT release, but the company has him factored into upcoming creative plans. Now, Strong has requested his release, quote, multiple times in the past several months, according to a report from Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select. However, word is that WWE has denied the request every single time. The veteran pro wrestler is said to be frustrated with many things within WWE over the past year, which has led to him asking for his release on several occasions. Now, WWE reportedly pitched a name change to Strong, but he was opposed to that idea. There were many people within WWE who were surprised that Strong was not included in the NXT releases made last Friday, as he's made it clear he wants out of the company. Now, Strong went to England in March for a quick run in the NXT UK brand, defeating Wolfgang on the March 17th taped episode, then coming up short against NXT UK champion Ilya Dragunov on the taped episode that aired on April 7. Strong lost to LA Knight and Tommaso Ciampa in SmackDown Dark matches this past January and also took a WWE main event loss to T-Bar that same month, but there's no word on if he's being considered for a main roster run. His last NXT 2.0 TV singles match was a loss to Solo Sokoa on March 22. And then, and then he competed in a second chance triple threat the following week for a spot in the NXT North American Championship ladder match at Stand and Deliver, which also included A-Kid and the winner, current NXT North American Champion Cameron Grimes. Now, Strong, this is what's interesting to me. Strong reportedly re-signed with WWE shortly before the Diamond Mine stable debuted last year. Now, this is why it's always fascinating because... Because the original plans, ugh, the original plan and anything, but the original plans called for Roderick Strong to be in the group with his wife, Marina Shafir, manager Malcolm Bivens, trainer Hideki Suzuki, Tyler Russ, and Arturo Ruas. But less than one year later, Strong is actually the only member of the originally pitched stable to remain with the company. Now, WWE recently began a storyline where Strong said he wanted to make changes to the Diamond Mine stable so they don't fail like the Undisputed Era did. WWE, of course, released Malcolm Bivens last week, along with nine other budget cuts, and now the group consists of Strong, the Creed Brothers, and Ivy Nile. Strong has reportedly remained professional in his handling of creative week to week. It was also noted that WWE officials currently have no plans to release Strong as he is factored into upcoming creative plans. That past, but that bit of the end where it says oh he's factored into upcoming creative plans means a whole lot of nothing honestly because um just a couple of weeks ago harland was factored into creative plans and he left the company we saw last year people were getting caught up to the main roster and were factored into creative plans and they ended up leaving the company so i don't really think that has anything to be him being tied into wwe i like many of the uh, wrestlers within or people within wwe was surprised that he hasn't been released either this past Friday or prior to that because the, the reason I'm surprised by that is because, again, it's a bit like when Dexter Loomis was released by WWE last Friday. You look at Roderick Strong and you look at the direction that WWE is going in with the, the, the age of the talent that's on their roster and the type of wrestler that they are hiring, the type of profile that they are hiring right now, and Roderick Strong doesn't fit he just doesn't fit what they're looking for he's an older guy he's in his late 30s he's you know made a name for himself on the independent scene he has a, a name that he used outside of wwe all of it just he just doesn't fit so i'm surprised that he's still in nxt 2.0 because frankly he's not what they're looking for right now it's the same with people like kyle o'reilly people like adam cole people like johnny gargano ultimately they all decided to um not sign new contracts when wwe still probably wanted to keep them to try them maybe on the main roster but they saw the writing on the wall they said we just don't fit and that's not that's not a bad thing 
It's not. That's just the direction that WWE is going in. So again, I was surprised that he stuck around. For me, it seems clear that he realizes he doesn't fit in NXT anymore. And he probably wants to be with his wife, frankly, in AEW too. She's been featured on AEW television. Eventually, will he leave? I think so. You know, it'll get to a point where he just says, I don't want to work anymore. And I don't. And again, he'll probably be professional. I was really, really shocked. It must be said when he signed a new contract last year, because again, I was just like, wow, I just didn't. Uh, he doesn't fit. He doesn't fit what they're looking for. But I think this will lead to ultimately him leaving. I said the same about Mustafa Ali. So who knows? Maybe we'll see Roderick Strong appear on the main roster. But it, it would appear at this point, to be honest with you, that they've had their look at him. You know, he's done dark matches for SmackDown, for Raw. He's done main event tapings. If they wanted him on the main roster, he'd be there right now. And to me, it seems fairly obvious that Vince McMahon, Bruce Pritchard, whoever it may be who's making that call, ultimately it's Vince, but whoever it may be doesn't think there's a spot for Roderick Strong on the main roster, which is crazy considering the worker he is and the ability that he has. Is he the best promo? No. But, okay, who who is the best promo nowadays? I think every pro wrestler, bar a select few, could improve their promos. So, yeah, it's not surprising. When I saw this report yesterday, the only thing that was, I guess, somewhat eyebrow-raising was that he signed a new contract last year, and you would say, well, why did you sign that contract? I guess at the time, because he was being pitched the original Diamond Mine Stable, which was in the original NXT with Triple H in charge, and not the colors, and not the, you know, the... Um, the developmental aspect of NXT and all that kind of stuff. That that's you know that that's um, that's not what it was. That's probably why he signed, and that's probably why he wants his release now because he's probably thinking, look, when I signed my contract last year, I didn't think it was going to be this. Like I I signed a contract to stay in the original NXT to be part of this new faction and then eventually go to the main roster, and that hasn't happened. So I want out. Like I said, I think eventually he will leave, but it doesn't look to be immediately. Speaking of releases as well. Of course, we did see the budget cuts last Friday once again. And WWE is reportedly giving its new talent just 90 days to show improvements or else they may get released, according to Dave Meltzer on the latest edition of Wrestling Observer Radio. Now, releases in WWE have become more and more frequent over recent years. And last week, the company cut 10 employees from NXT. There were a variety of reasons for that. And it had been reported that Harland, in particular, who you can see on the screen right there, had been let go to his lack of due to his lack of progress. Uh, that is something that WWE is now looking at uh, for all new wrestlers that join the company. Now, talent will reportedly be fine if they're showing steady progress throughout their time. But if there is not a quick improvement, then there is a chance they will not be kept around long past the 90 days. This even includes those who sign on to long-term contracts, even if they're being given 90 days to showcase their ability. Meltzer did add that Harlan did not show enough progress in his time with the company overall. Uh, of course, not all wrestlers were released for that reason, though. People like Dakota Kai, Malcolm Bivens, they weren't going to sign new contracts. Um... But, I mean, it just that is the culture of the company at this point, right? We talk about a company that you walk around on eggshells and there is no job security at all. People move from all over the country or the world to Florida, buy a house, and then they're released just days later. That's WWE. I would prefer it, honestly, and they won't do this, but I, why not put that into their contracts? Why not sign everyone to 90-day contracts? And then if they, don't, if they don't make the cut, then it's easier to release them. And also, you know, it's... Um, I, I, I just don't understand that. Or they have they sign into a 90-day contract, then they have the option to automatically turn it into a whatever, you know, like a probationary period. That's what it feels like. They've basically signed these people now to a probationary, probationary period. Um, and it just goes to show that they're walking on eggshells. That's the company environment right now. It, that really is. Drew McIntyre versus Roman Reigns. We know it's a match that's going to happen at some point later this year. Um, people thought it could happen at WrestleMania Backlash. It's not. The reason why is because WWE is holding off doing a singles match between Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre until a bigger event, according to Dave Meltzer on the latest edition of Wrestling Observer Radio. The two men, of course, will be colliding at the upcoming WrestleMania Backlash premium live event, but it's going to be part of a six-man tag team match. Now, Roman and Drew have been competing in singles matches during live events recently. That was the case prior to WrestleMania 38, but WWE reportedly is holding off having them compete at a premium live event in what would be likely for both titles, of course. That is simply because WWE wants to do this at a bigger show as the company deems this as a major match, which again... 
It's something I said uh, yesterday when we spoke about the WrestleMania Backlash main event being changed is that my thought process was that they just want to save it. They've got a string of stadium shows coming up in, in the summer. They've, of course, got Money in the Bank, which is in uh, Vegas inside of a stadium. They've got SummerSlam, which is actually at the end of the July this year, not in August, it's at the end of July in uh, Nashville inside of a stadium. And then, of course, of course, they've got Clash at the Castle, which is in Wales. Um, that's in a stadium too. I don't think they'll be able to hold it off. Um, until Clash at the Castle, unless they do some kind of a trilogy. But if you're going to do a trilogy, McIntyre's got to win, or there's got to be a screwy finish. The next pay-per-view after WrestleMania Backlash is Hell in the Cell. Can they can they afford not to do it at that show? It depends what the storyline is. I've seen a lot of people say, no, they can't hold out. There's just no way they could do it. WWE can do it if they want to. It's just a case of if they know how to do it properly. If I was WWE... At WrestleMania Backlash, do an injury angle. You know, have Roman Reigns um, or have McIntyre, maybe not pin Reigns, but have McIntyre win the match for the baby faces. And then you have after the match, whatever the bloodline take out Drew McIntyre. Then his comeback match against Roman Reigns is at Money in the Bank inside of the stadium. Have that match be a screwy finish. I hate that, especially inside of a stadium, but this is WWE. This is what they would do. Have it be a screwy finish. You can then move that over maybe to SummerSlam. That's when Ro uh, Reigns can get maybe somewhat, maybe not a definitive win, but a screwy win. Maybe Heyman gets involved or something like that. And then McIntyre's last chance is at Clash of the Castle. You could, you could do that. Feasibly, you could do that. Whether or not WWE would do that, I don't know. Whether they can actually physically stretch it that long with people still being interested. People want to see McIntyre in the main event of Clash of the Castle. They just do. If they can stretch it that far, I have my doubts because just WWE, I have my doubts of them being able to stretch anything. But I don't think it's impossible. I think this is the right call, honestly. Um, but Because what other feud has Roman Reigns got on SmackDown? He's got nothing. Who else is going to face him? That was legitimately a problem. That's realistically why we've got a six-man tag team match because they could have done a match of Reigns versus you know, Nakamura. And a couple of years ago, with Nakamura, when he first came up from NXT, that would have been a big-time match if we were seeing that version of Shinsuke Nakamura, but we're not. You know, They don't have any top baby faces on that show to realistically face Roman Reigns. So it's <laughs> it's got to be Drew, and they've got to stretch it out because they have nothing else to use at this point. Now, Raw last night saw a, reu a reunion of sorts, even though they weren't actually in the, the faction at the same time. But two former Bullet Club members, Finn Balor and AJ Styles, joined forces on Raw last night, uh, as can be seen during the broadcast. Finn Balor did a run-in to save AJ Styles from a beatdown at the hands of Edge and Damian Priest of the Judgment Day stable. Thereafter, both men raised their arms and did the signature click NWO Bullet Club gesture. Of course, Balor was the founding member of the heel New Japan faction. Styles actually replaced Balor in the stable several years um, afterwards uh, from 2014 to 2016 but they were never part of the stable at the same time I see some people saying oh is this going to lead to a you know a tag team or anything like that I doubt it honestly I think that AJ Styles was just in a tag team for a year with a mask so I don't think he'd be going back into a tag team I could see tag team matches happening here since Balor I guess was somewhat feuding with Damian Priest and Styles is feuding with um, with Edge so certainly we could see maybe an alliance of sorts that could see tag team matches happening. I wouldn't be surprised if that did happen, say, at, I don't know, it happened at uh, Hell in the Sow or something of that nature, possibly. But uh, a full-fledged long-time tag team run, I don't know. Um, you know, and maybe it would be fun if they do add more people to the stable of Judgment Day. Then if you could maybe get some other former Bullet Club members, I don't know who that would be. Because I don't, is there any other former Bullet Club members in WWE right now that they could get into, uh, well, Cody Rhodes? Maybe you could do a somewhat bullet club versus a uh, uh, storyline with them versus Judgment Day, I guess. Maybe that could be a bit fun. So maybe keep an eye on that in the future. Uh, finally, speaking of Edge and AJ Styles, we have a stipulation announced for their match at WrestleMania Backlash. A stipulation match has been added. It was previously announced that AJ Styles will face Edge at WrestleMania Backlash. Of course, this is a rematch from WrestleMania 38. Of course, Edge got the victory after a distraction by Damian Priest at ringside. But in an update, WWE has now banned Priest from ringside for Sunday's Edge versus AJ match at WrestleMania Backlash. What I would think is probably going to happen here, despite the stipulation...
ending anytime soon. I would think this is where the new or next member of the Judgment Day stable debuts, possibly being Rhea Ripley, could be someone else. We'll have to wait and see. But anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts on today's WWE news stories in the comment section below. Be sure to like and subscribe to Wrestling News 365, and I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.